Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I apologize a little bit late because I have difficulty with the headset and look like it's not fixed yet, so I'm going to check it out later. Uh, today, our topic is about beating women. Beating women. Women uh, as target of violence. Now, you know, we spoke about this many times before. But, you know, still that will not really, I mean, it doesn't matter how much you speak about it. Uh, when you are a person who have a mentality of the cave time, it doesn't affect you how much people they speak about it. So try, today we will try to speak to those who have a cave time mentality and try to, to, to find out, I mean, what do you want exactly? When you beat a woman, what, what do you want? What exactly you are trying to accomplish? What are you trying to prove to us? that you are a hero, strong, a Rambo, Superman, Batman. I mean, who are you exactly? Okay, you see a woman and you beat her. And what is the accomplishment? Are you going to uh, like to be proud in front of your friends? I can beat a woman. I mean, you must be a hero. So what exactly, you know, uh, why this violence is used for against women? The answer is very simple. You are a coward, and you cannot beat men, so you go after women. As simple as that. Those who beat women, out their door, they are potatoes. They cannot be men in front of men. So he tried to practice his manhood, like, I'm a man, you know, but where? In front of a woman. Otherwise, a real man, he does not need to prove himself in any way by beating anyone. Not even, even if it's a man. I mean, what, you see, uh, uh, violence is a, is a very clear sign of stupidity and mental illness. It's a mental illness. It's not a strength. If you think you are strong, the cow is stronger than you. But it's a cow. A cow, she can fight ten men. If it's about strength but do you think you are a cow so why and what for those things happening uh, beating women violence against women have happened everywhere not necessarily from uh, a special community like uh, like today we'll talk about the Quran but not necessarily from an Islamic community. It can be in a, someone who live in the West or in the East. Those people, they do that. I mean, human being is a stupid creature sometimes. And he always try to... Uh, it's like he's a pressure cook, but he is the one is being cooked. And too much pressure inside him. And then the violence erupt to release the pressure he have it's a solution for him is not really because uh, he's smart he cannot take it no more uh, outside he is a woman inside he have to be a man outside everybody spank him and inside he is the only this is the only place he can spank somebody outside he's a potato Inside, he, this is the only place he can act as if he's a king. As simple as that. It's a pressure release. This is why you see that men who they are really strong, they don't use violence against their wives. The one who do that is those who they are weak. And weak here is not just about physical weakness. I mean... It can be mostly a coward. Mostly it's a coward person because it's not about how big your muscles, it's not about how big your size, it's about how coward you are. I will, I will make it simple for you. Have you ever seen somebody jumping in the chair because he or she saw a cockroach? It's a cockroach. I mean, for God's sake, it's a cockroach. How in the world somebody is five foot tall, a hundred pound weight, he got scared from one gram insect and he jumped on the top of the chair that's because you are a coward you are an, a coward now some women they do that just to show that they are spoiled like <laughs> I'm scared you know this is a like a stupid behavior 
you know some women they do that not all it's just to show off like I mean, she's not scared really but she want to show that she is she is like a high class person who that get disgusted but it's not all people do that and sometimes even men they do that uh, so when you are a coward and you cannot prove yourself anywhere except in a place where you guarantee that if you beat them they will not beat you back you beat your wife <clears throat> uh, somebody want to discuss my topic okay we will open our skype and see Only Muslims can call, remember that. And only Muslims who want to speak nicely with respect, no insult, no name calling. If you talk like a child, if you talk like an, an immature, and anyone in the text in the chat, he uh, start insulting Muslims, I will block you. Any Muslim, he start insulting people, I will block you. It doesn't matter who you are. Let us have a good discussion, try to learn something useful for everybody. Well, I don't see his... Uh, IP uh, I don't see any text from this person Try please to uh, not to use a bad language because we activated the uh, the text to uh, uh, to hide any text which is not right, avoid bad words, and we are waiting for the Muslim to give us his ID in uh, Skype so we can call him. You have to give me your ID, my friend. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time waiting for your ID. When you have, this is not an uh, ID. When you say Ayubi Ibnu, this is not an I, ID. <clears throat> this is a name he called himself with. Look, you guys, you don't know what uh, ID is. Skype ID, it contains certain format, not a name, because people they use the same name. Like you said, me, uh, my name is George, whatever. You will find millions of those. Like now, I put that name you gave me. I find endless number. Which one of them? Let me, I will try the one in the top. Huh. Let us see. The first one come to my, in my Skype. Let us see if this is the one. I send him hi. So anyway, until we, we get the, the Muslim uh, to call us, we continue. So what is what is exactly you are trying to do and accomplish when you beat a woman? If you don't, if you if women for you are bad, and they get your nerve, okay, don't get don't get close to them. Why you want to be with women? If you cannot handle women, stay away from women. If women are not good to you, why you want to be with them? Why you want to have them in your home? Go and live by yourself. Enjoy being single. So if you want to say to me that women, they get your nerve and they say things will make you angry, like stay away from them. That's not an excuse. If you are having a woman in your house to be your slave and your servant well guess what I mean women they can use violence too don't think you are the only one can use violence and they can do bad things too you see how a man he beat his wife harshly and then he go to bed and he sleep maybe you are stronger when you are awake but you are not when you are asleep I mean this is the, the, the worst decision a man he can do 
You are risking your life. You just made this woman so angry from you to the point she might go crazy and do some something wrong, a crime, the same as a crime you did against her, but more violent. So what what is the what is the intelligence in this behavior? No intelligence, it's stupid. My friend, you are saying to me, can you call me? I look for your name in Skype. I found a couple of names. I click at the first one, and you did not answer. I send you a hi. All right, here we go. This is the name. I click in it, and it says waiting for a UB to accept your invitation. Do you see it? So don't tell me, are you going to call me? So it's a stupid behavior. It's a risky behavior. Not only you will face maybe jail in some countries, uh, but not all countries, sadly. And for me, actually, I uh, uh, if I am a ruler, a man who beat a woman, I will take him to special jail. Well, everybody there is violent. Men who they are violent. So he will receive beating as much as he like. Don't you like to practice beating? Okay. We will beat you with a bunch of men who like to beat. Have fun. You beat each other. Every night you sleep and your ass is red like a monkey. Do you want to prove that you are a man enough you can beat people? I mean, this is stupid. It's a cowardly behavior. It's a stupid behavior. It is not civil and not a human. Now, we will go to the Quran and see the, the, the source of, this is why I made my, the title is the following, say no to Allah, say no to violence against women, because we have a religion who encourage men to beat their women. But before we go there, we have to go and do a little study before we come to the conclusion. Remember here we are talking against the religion. I'm not talking against Muslims. Muslims are people, you know, like... There is many, the earth is full of people, all kind of uh, colors, religions, ethnic. Our topic here have nothing to do with, with the ethnic, have nothing to do with color, have nothing to do uh, with uh, with you as a, as a Muslim. You know, it have to do with Islam. So we are talking a bit about Islam. In chapter 4, verse number 34, it says the following. And by the way, this chapter is full of crazy stuff. And we will go later to there. Uh, 34, here we go. Men are in charge of women. Okay, why men are in charge of women? You know, I'm not, by the way, uh, I'm not against the, like men in charge of women. That, sen that sentence itself is not really a bad sentence unless it's mean that men are in charge of a pet. Like if I say the man is responsible to feed his family, that is not a not a bad thing for the women. It's a good thing for the women. It's a responsibility for the man. So actually, this is against the man. It's not really for his good because now, okay, I'm forcing him to go and work hard and provide to his family. If this is what you meant, that's good. But if what you meant by men in charge of women, that's mean they can beat them and they can control them and they can humiliate them, that is a different story. And actually, the verse in, us, in the front of us, it means that exactly. Read carefully with me. Okay, it looks like we have the Muslim, he, he answered. But sadly, the, the headset is not working. Let me try again to see if we can receive his uh, voice call. Hello? 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 Yeah, my headset is not working. My friend, turn off your camera and don't sleep in the bed when you talk to me. I mean, this person, he want to talk to me and he's sleeping in his bed. Take care. You are blocked.
What? Crazy people. All right. So men are in charge of women because Allah has made one of them excel the other. And because they spend their property to support the women. So why the men are higher? You see, I said in the beginning, if the men are in charge, mean they have a duty to provide, that's good. But here, no. Here he's giving the excuse that they are excel because they spend their money, which means they control you because they spend their money. So here we go to conclusion where Allah is saying, because the man he spent his money on you, you are his pet. You are his maid. You are his slave. He feed you. Okay? He give you clothing. So this is why he is in charge. Okay, hold on. Muhammad used to work for Khadija. Khadija, she was the boss. Khadija, she owned the money. Muhammad, actually, he don't work for her. This is a lie. Muhammad, he just married her because she is rich. Okay, can Khadija beat the man? No. So why if the man, he, he spent his money in the women, the man, he can beat his wife, and the man, he is in charge, and he is excel. But if the woman, she spent her money on the man, she is not excel. Here we notice right away the unjust and the stupid logic. This is not only unjust, this is a stupid logic. The one who is using the logic, he have a mental issue. Because if this is a logic, it should work in both way. Whoever spends money in the other person, he should be excel. No, here it says clearly in the Islam, the Islamic religion, only men are excel upon the women. And the reason is, and because they spend of their property. <laughs> okay. If a woman, she spent from her property, she's excel. No. And now look who is the good woman. The good woman is obedient. Obedient to who? To the one who spent from his property. So you are not slave of Allah. You are not slave of the man. You are a slave of the money. He control you by the money. He feed you. He give you some bread. It's like a dog and his master. The dog, he have to be obedient. To his master because he give him a bone so islam is treating you lower than a human being in any way in any mean you are not even considered to be close to be a human being to the point just because he give you some food you have to be obedient he is and she has to be guardian to the secret of which allah has guarded and those whom you fear rebellion okay so now we have a problem there's some women they will not like that there's some women, they are not going to like to be treated like pet, like a cat or a dog in the house. So you fear, like you suspect they are going to do, they are not happy with you, you know? So what do you do? Admonish them. So here the man, he have the right to admonish you because the man is always right. The woman is always wrong, according to Islam. You see, when you give a privilege to the man, any man, as long he is in charge of those women, women who is maybe... Uh, a wife or a daughter or even a mother because if uh, if the father die in his time the male member the eldest he is in charge of the, f the house which means he can admonish his mother imagine she gave birth to you just a few years ago from there and now you are screaming at her and tell her what to do admonish they mean that you are the one who will correct their behavior so the Quran always assuming that the man is right and the woman is wrong. And what kind of religion this religion is? Saying that the man have a privilege to admonish and to punish. And here Allah, he come with a solution. Don't sleep with them in the bed. Let us think about this. If a man he is not good to his wife, can the women refuse to sleep with in his bed in Islam? No. If the man is not a good man, can she refuse to go to bed? No. Muhammad he said, if a woman her husband ask her to come to the bed and she refuse, the angels will curse her all night. Let us see. Hmm. 
the hadith. The Messenger of Allah said, when a man called his wife to his bed and she does not respond, he, the husband, spent the night angry with her. The angels curse her all night, all until the morning. So in the heaven, there is, well, like let's say, a trillion angel. Okay, all the trillion angel will leave with a job. One was making a bread for Allah. The other one was making barbecue. The other one was making sauce. The other one, he was making a, a, sh a shish kebab. The other one was making hummus. All of them, they will stop working because now they have to curse the women who did take off his hair panty to Allah. The sky, all of it is busy with her panty. I mean, how dare you? You are a female and you did not take off your panty. Do you see it? This is a religion. There's nothing making Allah busy and the angels busy except cursing the women for a very simple reason. She did not go to bed. The guy is horny. Come on. How do you do that? How you ignore a horny man? Uh, Allah, he made you for this, according to Islam. This is the point that because Allah, he made you for that job, this is your job, according to Islam. How insulting. How disgusting. Allah will not curse the man and the angels will not be busy cursing you if you are a man refused to go to your wife bed. Like, look like this guy, Ayub, he's saying, who dared to call me. Let us see, maybe he's good. But guys, I apologize. My headset, the one I connect, that the, the, like the sound to you directly, is not working, so I don't know how good the sound will be. Let us call Mr. Ayub. I hope the sound will come good. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Hello. Ayub. Yes, Ayub. How are you? Baik-baik uh, saja. Bisa bahasa? Are you going to talk to me in English or you will talk to me in language I don't understand? Uh, saya ingin bicara dengan bahasa saja. Sa, 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 sa. So you are calling us. We are in English program and you are speaking in text in English saying who want to call me? And then when you talk to you, you say bahas bahasa bahasa bahasa. Uh, Indonesia. Hey. Say uh, hi to mommy. The funny he is in, in, in the in the chat, he is talking in English, he's saying who wanna call me, who dare to call me? In the in the chat he says who dare to call me? When you speak by voice, shaha shu have shishaha. Like he's a hero, like who dare to call me? Like why? You say like what? We have a guy who is saying who dare to call me. That would be in, like a, a tempting to Christian Prince. You know, I, I, I left everything like Allah when he his angels they stopped working, making barbecue, and start cursing the women. Shaha shu ha shishaha. Ha ha hu. Ha ha ha. Okay, you, you want. I mean, I can't answer you, obviously. You can make Quran, by the way, because you, what you say to me and the Quran are the same. Nobody understands what the Quran is saying. So look at this. The angels will be angry from her. And by the way, even Muhammad, he made it a condition that a woman who is obedient to her husband is the only one who can go to heaven. It's a condition for a woman to go to heaven. You want to go to heaven? You have to be obedient to your husband, even if he's filthy. Actually, Muhammad, he says, like, if I am to order a woman to bow down, I will order her after someone, after Allah, I will order her to bow to her husband. Hmm? 
To her husband, why? I mean, what exactly the husband is? He is God. Who is this husband? Who the women she have to bow down for him? Obviously, he is God. The messenger of Allah said, if I were to command anyone to prostrate to anyone else, I would have commanded the women to prostrate to their husband. So Islam is treating women in a very, very, very ugly way. Like the man is God, the woman is a, is a slave who worship that God. But remember, in Islam, the women husband can be changed by saying one word. I mean, the man who is your God, he can be changed. You will have a new master very fast. He said to you, you are divorced. Even these days allowing them to make divorce by saying a word, in, not even saying it, by text message. By what? A text message. So obviously, Islam is not treating women in any way, in any mean, as a good thing. Women in Islam are very, very treated, very down, not respected. And the funny, uh, and the other day, a woman, a Muslim woman, I think she's Turkish, she posted, like the Prophet, he says uh, in the Hadith, that the heaven is under the feet of the mother. But the mother, they will go to hell. What he's saying that if you want to be, you want to go to heaven, supposed to be good to your mother. Okay, that's wonderful. So how you can be good to your mother, but you are saying be, be bad to your wife because the mother is a wife. The same woman, she will have many positions in life. She is a mother for someone. She is a wife of someone and she is the daughter of someone. So you go to heaven by being good to your mother and you go to heaven for beating the same mother who is the husband beating her. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this? How being good to the woman who is my mother, I will go to heaven, but she herself, she will not go to heaven unless she obey and her husband beat her. And not only that, Muhammad, he claimed that women, they are, most of them, they are going to go to hell. And why is that? Because according to the smart Muhammad, women, they have deficiency. They have deficiency in their mind, in their religion. You see it? All those stories. What kind of a, a prophet? He says that women, they have deficiency in their brain. And he is arguing that the proof of that, the Quran. I mean, look at this. This guy, he made a book. He wrote a book by his hand. And he is coming to us and say, okay, the, the book I wrote. Like, imagine you are debating me. And you say to me, a Christian prince, what is the proof that this is true? I say, read my book, my opinion. This is your opinion. It's a book or not. It is you who wrote it. So Muhammad, he fabricated a book saying that it's a book from God. And when they argue with him, why we have deficiency in our brain, in our intelligence? He said, isn't it true that in the Quran says a, a one man is equal to women? Well, but this is your claim. This is you, you came to us. We have no witness that there is a God. His name is Allah is exist. Nobody saw you receiving those verses. You go to your snoring. You wake up in the morning and you say to us something like, okay, man, he can be the wife. And you come with an idea that women are stupid and a man, he is better in memorizing things and they have deficiency in their intelligence. But the one who made this statement, actually, he is the one who have deficiency. And I will explain to you why. If the women, they have deficiency in their religion. And he is saying here, asking women to give a charity so they can go to heaven. So why they will go to heaven? Sorry, they will go to hell. The majority of the doers of hellfire, according to Muhammad, are women. So well, women, they ask him why. Why we are the majority. He says because you have deficiency in your religion, in your intelligence, and your religion, as you see. 
and now the one smart woman she is trying to uh, like uh, to come to a conclusion why i mean so wh wh what is our deficiency nobody says that before muhammad he came and he says okay well is it true that uh, allah in the in his book says that one woman one man is equal to two women the woman she said yes the quran says that he said okay this is your deficiency in your intelligence so the reason a woman in Islam she cannot be witness in the court because Islam consider women are not equal to a human being she is a half a human being I mean you have to be mentally sick to come with such a conclusion first of all witnessing women they can do better because women they are way better in details you go you do not need to be say, like a, a genius to be put PhD take your wife to a party and come back let us ask the man what he saw and ask the woman what she saw the woman she will tell you what people they were wearing the ears the perfume what women they, they were seeing the hairstyle the shoes the colors the, the dress the men uh, everything the man he will not remember even the dish he ate So where is, who is the one who have in the deficiency in the intelligence? This is the most stupid statement ever. This is no way somebody he claimed to be coming from God, speaking for God, speaking of being a messenger of God, he say such a stupid thing. Like, you know, uh, Abbas, Abbas, uh, uh, he he have a wife, but I assure you his wife is smarter than him Abbas he called me he says peace to you and then I ask him why you are saying peace to me the prophet He forbid you from saying peace to non-muslims. He says he, he said that only to those who they are arrogant against Islam So who I am then according to you? <laughs> this is deficiency in intelligence. He's a man he just said the prophet said according to him according to his answer that his intelligence that should not say peace to those who they are arrogant against Islam okay so Christian Prince is who against uh, according to you <laughs> he is not against Islam <laughs> And suppose he is trying to prove to us why he can say peace to me. Because Islam forbid him only to say peace to someone if he is arrogant against Islam. And yet Allah saying that Abbas, he is twice more smarter than females. But we prove it wrong in two seconds. Abbas is no way even to be equal to maybe 1% of a female. And here, look what Allah is saying. Is it true that women can neither pray nor fast during the menses? The women, they said, okay, yeah, affirmative. He said, this is deficiency. Have you ever heard, heard of a stupid argument like this? That because you have menses, you have deficiency in your religion. Well, but you see what, you know what deficiency mean? Okay, look at those two deficiency Muhammad is speaking about. The first one is deficiency in intelligence, which is proven to be stupid. And obviously the one who mentioned that he is the one who is suffering from deficiency. Deficiency in, in their intelligence. Hmm? Let's change the color. <clears throat> There is two deficiency one in the intelligence and one in the religion and both of them they will lead you to go to hell but look at the stupid madman his name is Muhammad because if women she have deficiency in intelligence and she have deficiency in, in, in her religion and the first one is about her brain the second one is about her menses is it Allah who created them let us assume for the sake of argument that Muhammad is right women they have deficiency which is absolutely false but is it Allah who create them as they are? 
So how that can be a reason to go to hell? Have you ever heard of a stupid argument like this? I make you, I am the creator. I create you with deficiency. And then because I created you with deficiency, I'm going to send you to the hellfire. But my friend, it's not their fault. Like did the women she choose to have menses? Like did she call Allah says here, Allah give me menses please? Did the women ask Allah, hey please make us half a brain as Quran claim? If Allah is the one who made them having a deficiency as you Muslim claim or Muhammad claim in their intelligence, how they can be punished for what you did? That proved to us that the one who have a deficiency is Allah and he's a prophet. Because I cannot punish you for something I created on you. It's like Allah is going to punish a mosquito for sucking blood. What mosquito is, is made, this is how she can live. I mean, this is her food. How you want to punish the mosquito for sucking blood? Are you going to send the mosquito for hellfire? You made the mosquitoes this way. What about you made the mosquito drink Pepsi Cola instead of blood? So this is how stupid the one who made this argument. He is the one who is suffering from deficiency. For the reason to go to hell is stupid. And the whole story, Muhammad is asking them to give their jewelries and their earring so he will be rich. He is scaring the hell of them, saying to them, if you don't give me money, you will go to hell. So, okay, what is the solution? Now, women, they have deficiency and they have a lack of intellect and they have deficiency in religion. So how we can go to heaven? Look what he said. Uh, give it charities. Give me your money. So now what the women who give her money she will go to heaven yes Allah don't care anymore about your deficiency that's it you pass you have money give me the money you pass Allah don't care anymore about your deficiency that is what a scam is about right This is exactly what a scam is about. You see, even though some they claim to be Christian, call us right now and receive a blessing. Your sin will be forgiven. So like if you don't make donation to them, your sin will not be forgiven. Those are a scam. There are no Christian. And Muhammad, he made it so clear in the Quran that money is the way to go to heaven. This is why he said here in different in many places actually not only one place if you give Allah money and who is the one collect the money Muhammad if you give Allah money Allah will forgive you for your sin do you see it Allah is begging for money if you land into Allah goodly loan he will double for you and forgive you <laughs> since when you can bribe God so those women they have deficiency in their brain and if they give money to Muhammad give their earring give their gold give their silver give their diamonds Allah will double for them but we're in heaven and he will forgive them uh, Abbas is insulting me is uh, calling me a prostitute my friend the prostitute is your God because your God is the one who abuse women and make it a license for Muslims to do prostitution let us go there as long as you mentioned the word prostitute here we go Islam is a religion we're practicing prostitution is lawful and legal and the verse in front of you chapter 24 verse number 33 Force not your maid, your slave girls, into prostitution. And let, if they choose, if they would preserve their chastity. Okay, and if we force them, Allah will forgive him. There is no punishment for prostitution in Islam. And any Muslim man, he owns slaves, he can make them work as, as, as a whore. 
and Allah saying to him uh, don't force them okay so if they agree it's okay yes okay what if I force them there's no punishment there's no punishment you force them you don't force them the reason Muhammad he made this verse because Muslim women they start complaining the men they don't go home the men they have each one of them 40 50 women slaves and they are open a pimp house there's a there's a there's a chapters in Islamic books it's called Isti'aratul Furuj exchange of a vagina imagine so they have hundreds of slave women and they what they do they don't call the women a woman anymore they call her a private part Isti'aratul Furuj which means you borrow a vagina and instead of from me and I will give you a vagina like you give me 10 vagina from you I'm bored of them so I will give you a, the, the a equal number All of you heard about slave girls, but most, most of you do not know that a slave girl in Islam, she was used badly as a prostitute, forced into sexual business. Not only her owner, he raped her, or the owners, sorry, because anyone who is in the household of the owner, he can rape those women. The owner, he can give the slave to another person to sleep with her too. It's a change. And this is the truth. Now, if we go back and we check the hadith, where Muhammad had proven to us that he have a lack of intellect, <clears throat> and Muhammad himself he have a lack of religion. Because if Muhammad he have a religion in any way in any mean he should not say that to women All what Muhammad want is the money As simple as that When women they start giving their jewels and their money Muhammad, he grant them to go to heaven. Hmm? Give it charity. Eh? Uh, who is the one collect charity? And what the charity is? Your earring, your jewelries. All of this. Is the same. Same stories. How in the world this man became a prophet? And now, if we go back to beating women. When Allah He says to the Muslim man, and those who do you fear their rebellions beat them, what will happen after beating the women? Uh, be brave, okay, guys. Should I make uh, should I make the wish of uh, of uh, Abbas uh, come true? Abbas, you wanna? <laughs> Abbas, are you sure, Abbas? Are you sure, Abbas? Okay, let me find your name. Here we go. Okay, Abbas, call me. <coughs> call me, Abbas. Abbas, he insists what we can say. I can see your name in the list. You call me. I have like a, a million names in my Skype. Where is Abbas? I put you in the kids section. Abbas, here we go. I found you. Hold on.
Hello. Yes, Abbas, how are you? Hello. Mute you too, please. Hello, Sipi, can you hear me? Well, you have a background. Mute, mute. What do you have there? Hello? What's wrong with this guy? Mute. What? Hello? Hello, hi. Hello? Yes, Abbas. We hear you. Can you hear me? CP, I think somebody is using my account, uh, a fake account. I'm at work right now. I can't even talk to you. Oh, okay. Just, all right. I will block him. Okay. All right. Account. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, admin, block this guy who claimed to be Abbas. Obviously, he's a kid uh, uh, abusing the name of Abbas. There's no way Abbas, he will say, call me like this. He will, because he knew what will happen. Block him. So now after I beat the wife and Allah is bringing me a solution and now if the women obey me don't beat her okay okay what what after I did beat my wife what happened you can go and you will find that this is will impact the life of my wife and my family for the rest of their time for a long time there is not only a physical harming there is something a lot more dangerous than physical because physical harm and you can put some you know I mean medicine whatever and it goes but there is more than physical there is something will stay with you forever there's things if you do them they will not go by time like if you're able women you know maybe it is a physical but the harm which is done to the women mentally is way beyond the physical. The physical, she can get over it after a few hours, maybe. The effect of violence against women can cause long-term physical and mental health problems. Violence and abuse affect not just women involved, but also their children, families, communities. These facts, if effect, sorry, include harm to the individual health, possible long-term harm for children, and harm to community, such as lost work and home. So, you know, here you can find tens of sections and studies. And this is not a website made against Islam. This is a website to explain to you when you beat a woman, your wife, your family member, what will happen exactly, what is next to expect. So how can God, he claimed to be God, his name is Allah, he do not know this. He do not know that this is not a solution that will create a problem. And what kind of a wife I want in my house she will teach my kids to be proud of themselves if she herself is humiliated. You see, women is the first school in the society. It's not the father. A child he grow in the lap of his mother. He learned what he learned as a start from his mother. So if we have a mother, she is humiliated. If we have a mother, she is beaten every day. If we have a mother, she have no respect. Nobody respect her. What kind of a child this child will be? And if we have a child, he watched the father. He is beating his mother every day. What will happen? This? How much harm you put in the heart, in the in the brain of this person who is a little seeing something you don't understand? This is the mo the woman she he loved. She loved her. She's his his mom. And now he will cry that the father is beating the mother and that because he the father he told him by Allah that you have to beat her to make her obey you and the child is saying to himself what a stupid God somebody says chapter 4 verse 19 Quran says you are not allowed to force women let us see if this is true Guys, chapter 4, let me show you this uh, person, he says, uh, Daniel Kamsi. How are you, Mr. Daniel? Let me post, let me post uh, your, uh, your comment. <clears throat> Do you see, guys, Mr. Daniel, he said something. Let us check if it's true. 
chapter 4 verse number 19 okay we go there <coughs> you know what I'm going to learn something from you hmm. verse number 19 where where it says that where it says you cannot force them oh who you believe it's not lawful for you to forcibly to inherit this is about women inheriting you idiot well, what are you talking about those they are using an excuse to 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 take advantage against the women and they take their money for any reason so this is a verse is not uh, you know if this verse is not as you are saying well that's mean the Quran is a stupid book because the Quran the same chapter saying the same page saying you beat them so what we would do now which one of them now if we go and see the interpretation for this verse do you like to see it there we go let us go to the interpretation so you will not say Christian Prince is uh, saying his own whatever you know you know the Muslims you say potato they say tomato Because if the Quran says if this is a book from God, it's not it's, if it's not from Allah Supposedly which means from God you will find a lot of contradiction in it. Okay, let us see if this is a contradiction or not All right Here we go This is the interpretation You see it's about inheritance Even they used to inherit women, which means like uh, uh, the woman, her husband died, somebody from the family will inherit her as if she is a property. What so what this have why you are giving me this verse? Copy paste. Nobody wanna read, nobody wanna check. Did you check it yourself? The one you're asking me to, to post it for you? Did you yourself check it out? Or you are just a copy paste? What happened to this guy? The guy who told me to post the verse for him. Is he still alive? Daniel? Before you say to me, go and see, it says don't force them, you know, go and read it. The Quran is so clear. Here we go. If we go in the same the same chapter, chapter 4, verse number 34, it says beat them. The same page so if the same page saying two different things that mean Allah is a stupid again but it doesn't say that this is your Quran the same translation the same page I don't need for me I do not need translation I speak I speak Arabic this is my first language none of the Islamic translation actually is uh, uh, even close to be accurate but if I use my own translation, the Muslim they say he's fabricating. This not this doesn't say that. You notice in my books, I'm using Islamic translations, even though I don't agree with them. Because if I say the Quran says beat them, they say, oh, Christian Prince translation, Christian Prince is not being on. Do you remember how many Muslims they say when I, I showed you and I made Muslims read? That the prophet he can force any man to leave his wife to him just to do uh, two weeks ago or a week ago we have two Muslims they call us life and they got you know very embarrassing and they speak Arabic the same about Islam teaching the man that he can sleep with his daughter if she is a daughter from out of marriage the Muslim they made tons of videos. Christian Prince is lying. Fast translate him, brother. Don't believe him. This is absolutely a haram. The Quran forbid sleeping with you. Abdul, the Quran forbid sleeping with your daughter if she is a daughter from adultery. And now I can show the reference for anyone who speaks Arabic and I can say, please read it for us. Nobody there to call us. 
if I am lying call me right now if you speak Arabic say hey Christian Prince show me where it says that a man he can have sex with his daughter in Islam if she is a daughter from adultery and if I don't show it I promise you I will disappear from the internet I will give it to you even from the government website of the king of Saudi Arabia the Ministry of Islam So if Allah is a smart God, he should know that there's a consequence, not only beating women. Okay, so now you force the women to be to, to, to obey her husband by violence. What is next? And there is something I, I don't want to forget. The Muslim they say here, the Quran says that banish them to bed the part. What does that mean? Put them in their rooms, jail them in their rooms, and don't sleep with them. Just to tell you how smart is that. I remember a story uh, of a, Sa a Saudi man. He have he's very conservative. You know, his wife wear burqa. I mean, it's Saudi Arabia. It's normal there. He put bars. He had bars in his windows, bars in the door. He locked the door. He had no phone. Nobody can come. He will not allow his wife to have any visitor unless he is home. He have to be home. It doesn't matter who is the visitor, even if it's a woman. For sure, the men are not allowed to visit uh, women there. Unless it's like the brother or the father. Six months, the guy, always when he is home, a woman, she come to the door wearing burqa. She knock at the door. The husband open the door. Because she is a woman, she don't talk to the man. Come on, haram. Haram, brother. Her voice is a private part. So he opened the door and he called his wife. Hey, wife, your friend is here. Take her to your room. She take the friend to her room and they go to their room and they stay there for a couple of hours. And even the husband is being nice because he's happy. His wife don't go out. She don't even complain. That's he's excited for that. He control her very good control. She can't even breathe. So he even make them tea and coffee. He leave it next to the door. He knock at the door. Hey, wife, the coffee is ready. The fruit is ready and then one day after a few months his sister she came to visit he opened the door he found his sister he told his sister to join the women in their room because she's a woman she can join the sister she went there she found a guy so for six months the wife she was having a guy wearing burqa coming to sleep with her in the house in the presence of her husband and the stupid fool husband was making tea and coffee for them do you see what Making women obedience me by forcing them? Do you think she is a puppy? Do you think by having bars she still cannot do something bad if she, if she, if she want to do bad? It was a guy. A guy wearing burqa. It's the best way to hide yourself. You can be a man wearing burqa. Six months, the guy doing boom, boom in the house of the guy and the stupid guy, he is making tea and coffee for them. Praising Allah for the will, for, for the gift he gave him that women, she cannot have a freedom. He is in control because man is maintainers, remember? So we jail the women, we put them behind bars and we don't let them go out. We punish them in their rooms and look what they, then what happened? You push, you push them away from you. What kind of life this life is? So if a man, he stopped having sex with his wife, what is next? What you expect to happen? There is many they would have. They are willing to have sex with her. Are you going to walk with her twenty-four hours, seven days a week? She can do cheat on you even if you are in the same bedroom with her. Anyone remember how Muhammad get married? How many of you remember how Muhammad get married? From Khadija. Just to show you, if you want to force women, I mean, women, they can do things. They are not stupid as you think, Muslims. Muhammad wanted to marry Khadija. Khadija, she is a, from, a, from a very good, very good family, supposedly. And Muhammad is a, from nothing. It's not as Muslim they claim that Muhammad was from the biggest family, blah, 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 blah. It's, this is all their claim.
what Khalija did she made a meal I'm, I'm looking for the reference to put it in the screen she made a like invitation for a dinner and she made her father drunk she can do the same to you the marriage of Muhammad happened by alcohol the first wife Muhammad he had accomplished by alcohol Musnadul Imam Ahmad She made food, she made a drink, she invited uh, her father and some friends and they you know they, they ate and they got drunk and when her father she you know like he passed out uh, uh, you know he got drunk she changes the clothes and she made him believe that there was a wedding party he woke up in the morning he says why I'm wearing those clothes she said yesterday you married me to Muhammad don't you remember so she made her lawful to Muhammad by alcohol Islam actually accomplished by alcohol because if not Khadija Muhammad will never be a prophet he used her money to be considered as a noble man in Quraysh he have money now he married the second rich person in the tribe of Quraysh Google translation what is Google translation let's see if we can do translation I don't see option for Google translation here Look like this page does not allowed. Yeah, I don't see option. <clears throat> but anyway, anyone who speaks Arabic, you can call me and you can read it for us if you are a Muslim. That is the truth. So if you if you you are putting a pressure on the women, beating the women, using violence against the women. To make her obey you. Well, women, she have her trick. She can't get back her right from you. She can give you some extra uh, uh, headache uh, medicine, make you sleep, and bring her boyfriend. By the time you wake up, he will say bye-bye. The same as Khadija she did to her husband, to her father. And by the way, she did not did that alone, that by the help of Muhammad. She drunken her father so she can get married to Muhammad. That is the truth. Which means the first thing Muhammad accomplished in his life is his marriage to Khadija was a fraud. The first thing Muhammad did in his life, it was a fraud. Let me see if I open this page in uh, Google uh, browser. Maybe we can use Google translation. Let us see. Yeah, it looks like here it worked. <clears throat> All right, here we go. We use Google translation. You know, Google translation is not perfect, but what we can do better than nothing. Khadija, she made food, etc., uh, and she made him and, and drink, and she called her father and the group of Quraysh to, to the, you know, and when they get drunk, Khadija, she said to her father that you married me to Muhammad. Do you see it? Even with the stupid Google translation, it's, it's showing. The first thing the Prophet of Allah he established in his life is his marriage to Khadija was a fraud. Because this is a fraud, the guy, he did not approve marriage. He did not even speak about it. The guy was a drunk sleep. She, he woke up in the morning, he found himself where, look, imagine how evil they are. This is, this is, this is, those are really evil people. She made her father, I mean, what kind of woman she do that to her father? She made her father drunk. When he slept, she took off his clothes. She changed his clothing. 
made him wear the most expensive clothing which they wear like for a, a special occasion like wedding party and when he wake up he asked why I'm wearing those clothes and Rick what Khadija she said to him she said he said I did not marry you to Muhammad I never did that I will never do that she said do you want do you want people to say that you're in, to your people that you were drunk and you married me to Muhammad she is black in male in her father she blackmailed her father. She says, if you do, people will say about you, look, her father was a drunk and he married her to Muhammad. People will laugh at you. That is the truth. What kind of cult this cult is? You know, when somebody speaks too much about dignity, but he don't have it. Uh, be good to your mother. Be good to your mother, but beat your wife. But the, but the wife is a mother too. Be good to your mother, but jail your wife in their rooms. That's crazy. Because your wife is a mother. What kind of cult this cult is? So here we notice clearly that the God of Islam, not only he is not exist, he is false. This is a savage teaching. The Islam is a is is a is a free control. Given the it, it once I have a female, she left Islam. She is from Somalia, and <clears throat> I spoke to her. You know. And you know she accepted the Messiah Christ and she told me I want you to know that I did not leave Islam because of you yes you know, I mean you are the one who showed me you are the one who uh, I mean you open my eyes but I did not that's not you the reason is by your help I discover that Islam is made by man for the man and this why actually I don't I, don't, I cannot uh, forget her statement because what she said is absolutely true Islam is a religion made by the man for the man. It's not made for everybody. This is a religion, free control, where the man, religion made for him. What will happen if I believe in Muhammad? Allah will give me unlimited numbers of females who have no panties. 80,000 little boys, which is very weird. The God who enslave even children and women, even in heaven. So the man is God. This is why Muhammad he says, if I to to order a woman to bow down to someone, I will order her to bow down to her husband. To bow down to her husband. Why? Because Islam making the man God, and the woman is just a slave. She is his sexual maid. He, she is the cook. She is the one who give him babies. She is the laundry machine. She is nothing more According to this cult So Muhammad saying in front of your eyes that if the message of Allah if I were to command anyone to prostrate to anyone else I would have command women to prostrate to their husband And if the man if the husband he asked the women to move the dirt from a mountain to a mountain she should obey do you see it like am i making things up if the man were to command his wife to move mountain from here to there she have to do it which means even if he give you a mission which is impossible stupid and you have a stupid husband still you have to do it it's her duty to obey him So how in the world this is can be from God who is abusing women 
mentally, physically, even logically, and make them as equal to even animals. You know, they are they, they have better. You know, uh, 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 like uh, I remember once I, I used in like I was living in an apartment, and there's a dog sleeping just in the front of my door, and I have like a screen door. I, I push the screen door. He don't move. He don't want to move. His Majesty, Mister Dog. So what I did, I called the police because if you you cannot hit the dog. You cannot use any violence with dogs. They go to jail. Literally, you go to jail. So I called the police. And the police guy, he came and he started making a conversation with the dog. Come on, let us move. Come on. And the guy, the dog, he put his tongue out and he's looking at the police like, I'm not in a Muslim country, so you can beat me or arrest me. You cannot do anything about it. Try something better. Give me some bones. Give me some candies. The policeman, he grabbed some candies from his pocket. He give it to him and the dog move with him. So in Islamic countries, women, they are beaten, but dogs are in America are not. You cannot beat a dog in America. You go to jail. So what kind of religion where dogs in America, they have more right than women in Islam? Prove me wrong. Somebody saying a lie. There's a guy. His name is a prince. He says, a lie. "I mean, look at this, guys. It's a lie. It's in the front of you." I mean, those people are really weird. We are showing them the verse, the chapter, even the interpretation, and he say it's a lie. It's a lie. Look, it's in front of you. It's a lie. A brother editor. Christian Prince, he quote for us from the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. And he said that the Quran said, beat your men. The fact that it's a lie. The Quran did not say, beat your men. It said, spank them. And there's a huge difference between beat them and spank them. You spank your wife. You don't beat your wife. Uh, what? Uh huh? I'm going to prove to you that Christian Prince is a big fat liar. And he don't want to lie to us. As an example, I am married for four beautiful women and I don't beat them. The fact they are beating me. They are big and beautiful and I'm very skinny. In the other day, I called the police because four women, they attack me. And for no reason. That's because I ate their zucchini. Uh, this was Mr. Zakir Naik. So we show them the verse in the front of our eyes and the guy in the text, he said to me, it's a lie, it's a lie. I thought you are giving a, uh, giving birth or something, Mister. Uh, what his name? Are you giving a birth? Birth? Is the baby coming? Well, how it's a lie? It's in front of you. This is your Quran. This is your Muslim translation. And here we go. This is the website. Let me pause it for you. It's a lie. It's a lie. Liar. It's a lie. Why you don't make song? Make a song, it's called, it's a lie. And they will say to you that the prophet said, don't break their bones. Suppose like, this is how nice the prophet, like, don't break their bones, brother. Thank you, really. Because do you see how the prophet, he says, beat them, and this is like the Muslim, they, in, the, in some translation, they are the word light. It's not exist in the Quran. And he says, don't break their bones, brother. Isn't it amazing? And uh, with this, brother and sister, I invite you all of you to convert to Islam because Islam is the best way to establish a good family. If your wife, she did obey you, you beat her brother. And that will make her a very good woman. Because now she can make for you a salad. You say salad, she makes salad. You don't dare to make different food because you beat her. A brother and sister, it's a perfect way to live. Where you have a woman and children, they are crying against around you because you are beating them. And this is the way you grow a very healthy family. And look at me, I'm very healthy because my father, he used to beat my mother. The logic of Muslim scholars. There's a guy, he's, uh, and you can search for the video, 
uh, he is the official imam in 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 Qatar. He was saying women are the same as a car. When they buy a car, they come with a manual. And the manual is the Quran. And the Quran says beat them. Go watch the video. Hey, by the way, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, making Zachary Naik. Zachary Naik is here next to me. We are friends, you know. Yeah, we are in the same... Uh, How in the world anyone can believe in such a madness? Uh, yesterday I was seeing the news. A police guy who converted in, in, in France to Islam last year. Today, yesterday he attacked the police station. He killed four people. That's what Islam does. Violence against women, violence against children, violence against people, violence against everybody. Violence. It's a religion of violence. It's a free control of, by violence. This religion believes in one thing. You don't agree with me. I'm going to use violence to make you agree and approve in the front of you. So I think we have uh, done for today. By the way, I'm working in a book. It's called Allah Justice. So I hope I will be able to finish it soon. I'm working really. This is why I'm not doing live broadcast every day because live broadcast take a lot of my, uh, like you know, energy. I to say, and like even after you finish, like pfft, this religion is really make you really upset. I mean, it it, it takes time to relax after you speak about this stupid cult. So I'm working in this book. It's called Allah's Allah's uh, Justice, and I will I will uh, I'll try to make it small, not big. So let us say summarize the stupidity of the justice, what is called justice. And we will speak about Allah teaching, Muhammad teaching, the caliphate, etc. And what Islam accomplished as, as what it called justice to see if it's really true or not. So I hope soon we will have this book is out. And by the way, for those who get uh, uh, those speak German, I have my book Sex and Allah in German is already out in Amazon. And we have it uh, too in Dutch language, Holland. You know, if you speak Dutch, Dutch language or German, uh, Six and Allah is already out in Amazon. And for those who did not get their copy of my free book in the uh, Quran and Science for the uh, Indonesian language, you can go to my Patreon and you can check the link and you can download it from there. And all what we do is trying to help people to understand that this is not a religion. This is a very dangerous cult. And I'm not speaking against Muslims. I'm speaking against Islam. Muslims are people like us. Many of us, we believe in stupid things. It doesn't matter if you are really a person who claim to be a Christian, Jews, you know, like the superstition is all over. You know, you go to Christian countries, see still some Christians believe in, in crazy stuff, which is not true and not, not biblical. So we are not speaking against people. I'm speaking against wrong, bad teaching. People is my intention to save, not to insult, not to attack. And those people, they can be my family. They can be your sister. They can be your brother. You can be your father. You can be, you can be a Christian person, but yet you have a father who beat his wife. I advise you to show this video to him. This is a video for everybody. Beating women are wrong. Will not make your life better. Violence is wrong, will not make you a hero. You see, if I walk in the street, uh, you know, I'm, I, and, and I'm, not a, I'm not a coward and I will never be, but I will avoid fighting people. Because smarter. Okay, a guy, he was walking, he hit my shoulder. I look at him, he look at me, and now we start beating. That means both of us are a bunch of idiots. Just let it go. I mean, the guy is just walking in the street. He don't know you, you do not know him. Why you want to make a fight of it? We have to be, we are not, we are not animals. We are human. We should act like a human. And the Messiah, he taught us to be smart, to be vigilant, to be peaceful. So peaceful like a dove, but a smart like a snake. Hello. Hello. Yes. 
Uh, this, uh, is this Renfrew? Sorry? Is this Renfrew? What? Hello? This is a Christian prince with you. You are live on here. What do you want to say? Oh, yeah. So, I um, mean, yeah, I think like, it was me and the Renfrew. So, I think Renfrew invited me because I was. All right. How, how, what do you want to say, my friend? You are, so, you, you are a you, Muslim. So, you are, you are, okay, Mr. Muslim. What so do you want to say? All right, no problem. Go ahead. As long as you are a Muslim, you are welcome. What do you like to say to us? What is it? What do you like to say to us? Why you call us? Oh, I mean because uh, because I think he told me uh, he told me to add, uh, because I think I told him to add me in the. My friend, don't tell me he add you. He told you. I told my friend. He told you to add me to add you, and you add him, and then I added you, and then you did call me, and now what do you want to say to us? So I just uh, so I just want to talk. Okay, let's, let's go. I mean, what's wrong with those people? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean you just you know, tell me why you are calling me. By the time you tell me what happened between you and your friends, I will be asleep. How many times I need to ask? Okay, what do you want to tell me? You are welcome. Go ahead. So what do you call me? I don't care who invited you. How invited them? Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Yeah. It's like going to a restaurant and the, and the waiter the waiter come to you and says, "Sir, what do you like to order?" He says, "My friend, he told you about your restaurant, and actually the other friend he told him about it, and he said they have a good food, but I did not trust that friend because he said that always. You know, sometimes he is not really truthful. So I asked the other friend about it, and they said, "Okay, go and let us see." But just tell the waiter what do you want. I understand you are a Muslim. I told you welcome to call me, and you call me. Okay, I will give him one more chance. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ahmed, go ahead and tell me what do you want to tell my friend. Don't tell me why you are calling. I mean, what? Uh, just tell me what you want to say. You don't hear me now. Just go, man. Take care. You can call me maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be live on air. You can call me if your Skype now is not helping you. All right. You are welcome to call me anytime, but the next time you call me, don't uh, you know? Don't tell me uh, stories. Anyway, so guys, this is a message. This is my message for all of you: never beat your wife. Never beat anyone. If your wife, if your excuse, your wife is bad, leave her. Stay away. Let us say, let us say she you have a woman, she have problem, she keep insulting you, but you don't beat her, leave her. Beating the, the women will not solve your problem, will make it worse, will make your life disgusting. Why you want to live such a life? There's no excuse in the world for a man or a woman. To use violence by the way there's some women they use violence there's some women not all it was always the man who do that there's sometimes women are really they go crazy and they do stupid stuff too not only men do that whoever does this beating a spouse a man or a woman you prove to yourself that you are stupid literally and you are not capable and you don't fit to have a relationship or a family live by yourself stay single Family is not about me forcing my wife or my wife forcing me. Family is about two people who love each other and they will carry all the problems and happiness and sadness together. The wife, she is not a cook for you and the husband is not your mule. 
it's unification it's united agreement for us as a Christian especially it is something very noble even the Bible says that the Messiah he described the women as the church the same as the Messiah he sacrificed himself to the church the man should sacrifice himself to her his wife but the women she have a duty she have to be the same as the church too which is a big responsibility so it's a a company of two people they are willing to sacrifice and love will come Sac love is sacrifice you see when you love a person you sacrifice things you live to you like to do when you are single the first thing you sacrifice when you get married is a lot of your freedom you are not free as before you have responsibility now you can't go and have your friends and you spend the night outside leave your wife alone you cannot do that you have a wife now you are not single no more the women she cannot go alone and she as before so you sacrifice both of you sacrifice and the sacrifice is voluntarily based on love not because you force me and I force you if you cannot reach such a kind of life then don't go and get married you are making a big mistake your life will be miserable because you will feel like you are in jail and women should should not be a control freak the best and the, maybe I should make a video in my other channel where talking about the best way to lose a man or the best way to lose a woman and the, the first thing is to be a control freak where you been uh, why are you are late who called you who text you like the guy is answering who is texting you just give him a give him a space don't make him hate his life and wish to be a single again let your husband feel like he did not lose a lot by marrying you he won not lose most of women sadly they make the husband feel that he lost he used to be free nobody asked him where you going nobody asked him where he's coming from nobody asked him what he is wearing nobody asked him why he slept late nobody asked him so try not to be a control freak and the same for the man the more you try to be in control of the women the more you lose her you are not going to win her but I saw this guy looking at you why he's looking at her what she can do I mean he's he's looking so he looked people look people have eyes this is what eyes for so if the man is so jealous the woman is so jealous the man is so suspicious the woman is so suspicious you are just destroying your life and then you try to find a solution and start beating each other that's because both of you are stupid This is not a smart way to live successful life is that when you get married you are not going into a jail like many people they say to you he married he got into the cage of marriage why they call it a cage because this is a scenario most of people when they get married they feel that they are in a cage but it was not it should not be a cage don't do violence violence is wrong against whoever against animals are it's wrong how about a human being never beat your wife a wife never beat your husband never even beat your children because beating children can cause really a very bad harm to them like you can you can school them you can you know you can there's many ways to teach a child that he is doing wrong violence is a weakness it's a stupid it's a sign of a lack of intellect and intelligence before you get married from somebody try to discuss with that person regardless if it's a male or a female like I mean you are a male she is the female you are the female he is the male doesn't matter Try to discuss something very deep. Don't talk about what kind of music you like. 
like you see two people they are like supposed to now maybe engage or dating what, what color you like i like uh, blue i like a blue too we have a lot of comment that is get married how silly discuss serious stuff ask him what do you think about etc and try to see really if he believe in that or not not only ask him because many men they are willing to say anything the women she like to hear. Oh, you are so beautiful, men! I love your eyes. Maybe he's saying that just to get into your panty. Maybe he don't care for your eyes. You know your eyes. He care for something else. Many men they do that. So don't be a fool. Don't be a stupid. Try to discuss something very serious with them. Your eyes, he will marry you because of your eyes. Are you serious? Your eyes are so beautiful. Okay, what else? If he loves you for the sake of your eyes, uh, tomorrow he will see better eyes, he will love them too. Uh, some women they do breast uh, surgery. Okay, look at her breast. I want to marry this woman. She had big breast. I mean, are you are you trying to find a woman or a cow or what? What what, what the size size does matter, brother? Well, if he married you because you made a surgery for your breast, tomorrow a, a, a woman she will be younger and she had bigger ones. He will leave you. The say, the reason he married you for is the same reason he will leave you for. As simple as that. If he married you because you are rich. He will leave you because he will find someone richer. If he married you because you are pretty, he will leave you for more pretty. If he married you because you are young, he will marry, he will leave you for finding younger. But if he married you because really he loves you, he will never exchange that. And love has to be examined. Love is should not be an emotion controlled by emotion a love it would have to be an emotion which is supported by facts because emotions they change but the fact will not like if you love this woman because she is smart she's smart okay well she is going to be smart always she's smart that's it she, she, she proved that she is smart she proved that she is decent she proved that so marry a woman for the quality and the quality is not about body is not about the eyes is not about the lips that is not a quality and sadly these days people they do you know they don't they don't really go for marriage for equality even the man I mean the man he is no one maybe he is not even fit to be a husband for a second just because he have some stuff the woman she is seeking she marry him a woman she is seeking some security okay this man he presents security he have money he have a house he have a car he will buy her stuff he will buy her jewelry she is coming from a you know poor background so she's she she sacrifice her happiness to get what she think it's her happiness and then after she got this she got bored with it she got the car now okay but she is not happy she have the big house now but still she is not happy so what she tried to do now okay time to find a new boyfriend or a husband quality my friend is what we need not a quantity not violence and not a stupid action which will make you later regret Never beat, never use your hand. Your hand, you should be used to defend yourself only. If somebody made a threat against you, then you have the right to use it because you are not seeking it, you are pushing it away. You are pushing harm away from you. All right? So with this, I wanna say thank you. Don't forget to download the video. The video will not stay in my page for long. Uh, and by the way, for those who always like, uh, you know, we might have a problem because of live streaming. Maybe we cannot stream here again. I mean, 
sometimes YouTube cause me problems as you know they are all over me always you know how to find me all my videos have a link you can is appear in the screen either in patreon or in mind or etc you will be a bit I have hundreds of, of channels to do live broadcast so don't worry nobody can stop us just keep yourself updated so you know where to find Christian Prince if suddenly Christian Prince he cannot broadcast here or there don't worry about it creating a, a page to a YouTube to, to broadcast it take a few seconds what a big deal right nobody will be able to stop us nobody I promise you if the Lord is with me who could be against me they can do their best and their best is nothing for me so always please update your information that we have Instagram we have minds we have patreon we have many pages we have Facebook if in case something happened always you know how to find me and you will be notified where my new broadcast will be so if somebody think that he can stop Christian Prince by flagging his videos you are mistaken my videos are all over the second I finish here they will be all over people download them put them in all languages it is mission impossible and not only that actually sometime I wish like YouTube would do like uh, ban me for some time so I can finish my books <laughs> even that work for my benefit like in the last few days actually I was able to accomplish good deal in writing my new book which is, uh, uh, is about uh, Allah justice so I'm really happy that I'm able to accomplish and go far in the book so we can have it I hope I'm, I'm hoping um, maybe a few weeks from now I don't know I cannot give a, a date you know because writing is like you have to be in the mood of writing uh, but in the last few days I was really in a good mood to write and I was able to accomplish really really a, a good number of pages and uh, you know uh, we hope that the book will be done and ready to go soon so it doesn't matter what they do it's always going to be for our benefit if I don't go live in YouTube I will be working my book choose one which one you would like uh, shakes as I can which one you like Christian Prince writing a book or making a video choose one both of them is useful and by the way I do not need to make more videos I have tens of thousands of videos I don't know I'm like once I was looking at the videos I made in YouTube I got scared myself I mean I made all those videos it's scary I have videos to watch for people for years and years to come generations to come Christian Prince will die sooner or later but my videos will stay there for I'm speaking the truth and the truth is the Messiah the Christ and his name will live forever he says that heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not for he is the eternal God you are following the dead Muhammad who are following the living Messiah and by the living Messiah I am alive whoever believe in me and die will live my life is not in the hand of anyone I receive many death threat people want to kill me I don't care you cannot kill me twice I will die anyway I will die anyway but there is honorable death or you die for saying the truth and someone he just died in his bed he never accomplished anything in his life I am a follower of the living Messiah and you are a follower of the dead Muhammad once a big shake he asked my father he said to him you are a person who is very well known big name in the community so we would love to have you to be a Muslim I mean look at you you are, will be wonderful I mean because they seek someone like is important and my father he was smiling at him I was a kid at that time listening to my father and the, the guy is a big shot between the Muslims he's a big big shake my father he said uh, uh, Sheikh I want to ask you is uh, Prophet Muhammad alive he said no he's dead so my dad he says is Jesus the Christ is alive he said yes he is so he said well for now I'm going to follow the living one you follow the dead one if you wish and the Sheikh was so mute why well, you are inviting me to follow the dead man when I have the living Messiah even in your religion How you can ignore the living Messiah and you follow someone he is dead? Let the dead follow the dead. 
and the living follow the living and we are people who believe in the living God his name is a glory he is a miracle he is the Alpha he is the Omega and he is a beautiful he is love and he is a miracle which nobody can describe this is why his birth is a miracle his death is a miracle his existence is a miracle his work is a miracle his word is a miracle everything is about him is a miracle even him is a miracle that is my God who is yours thank you for being here everyone may the Lord bless you all Christ is Lord Islam is false and don't forget to download the video as soon we finish it take about 20 minutes to be ready and then you can download it thank you and see you soon bye bye Thank you.